We're going to begin with our, um, our sermon that is something of a children's sermon. And the reason why we do this is simply because children can understand truth and they can understand deep truth, great truth of Scripture. We just must work with them. We must learn to define terms. We must do everything that is necessary because our children are going to face a world one day that is hostile toward God and hostile toward the truth of God. And if they only stand based upon emotion or Christian cliché, they will not stand. They must have truth. So we have been studying a great truth from Scripture, and it is this. What is the chief end of man? What is the purpose of man? Why was man made? Children, why were you made? The Bible says that you were made for the glory of God. You were made for His joy and His good pleasure. You were made to do His will. And you will only find joy, children, in discovering who God is, discovering His will, and then obeying His will with all your heart. But not only were we created to glorify God, but we were created to enjoy Him. Here's something that you need to understand. Every beautiful thing that you have ever seen in your entire life is almost like looking in a garbage can compared to the knowledge of God. You see some of us who are older and we seem very excited about the things of God. And you wonder why. Are we just religious people? Do we just like uh, to follow commands? No. The reason why we're so excited about God is because we have seen something of His beauty, something of His glory, something of His goodness. That is why, children, your greatest need is to know who God is, to know His attributes, because the more you know about God, the more He will captivate your heart. He will take your heart. You'll want to give your heart to Him. Now, we have been learning some of the ways in which we glorify God. And we're going to look at today, just kind of, we're going to... um, summarize a few things we've already learned. First of all, we glorify God by loving Him. By loving God. The Bible says in Mark 12:30, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. With everything you are, you are to love God. If you're reading a book, you do it because you love God. If you're obeying your parent, you do it because you ultimately love God. If you're running in a field with all your strength, you should be doing it for the love of God, for the glory of God. You see, we don't have part of our life over here that belongs to God and another part of our life over here that belongs to us and everyone else. Every part of our life belongs to God. So if whether we're eating or drinking or anything that we're doing, we do it all for God's glory and God's good pleasure. Now, another thing that we learned a few weeks ago is that we are to respect God, we are to reverence God, we are even to fear God. Yes, the word fear is appropriate. You can use that word. Not in the way that you fear a person who's very angry and mean and dangerous. No. But fearing a person that is holy and righteous and good and that holds your entire life in His hand. And He can do with your life anything He chooses to do. Did you know that? It's one of the reasons we respect Him and one of the reasons why we fear Him is that He can do with you anything He desires. Now that would be terrifying, except for this one truth. God is good. God is good. And therefore we trust in Him and we trust our life to Him. But when I tell you children that God is good, I don't want you to think that God is safe. What I mean by that is though although God is good, 
He holds your life in His hands. He's Lord over your life and He can do whatever He wants to with your life. You may have certain desires. He may change those desires and change the entire direction of your life. Many churches meet and they, when, they, when the preacher gets up to preach, he's talking about everything that God wants to do to make all your dreams come true. You're not going to hear that here. God is going to do everything He is going to do in order to fulfill His will in your life. And He may take you and send you to the deepest jungles of the Amazon in order to be a missionary there. He may send you to Siberia. He may put you in certain places and certain activities that you never dreamed of. But we must go. Why? We belong to Him. Now another thing that I want to share about how we glorify God is we glorify God by separating from everything that displeases God. Now, if you have your Bibles, I just want you to open up just quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Children, now listen, this is very important. It says in verse 14, Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? One of the reasons, fathers, that you need to be teaching your children the book of Proverbs is because the book of Proverbs speaks about relationships. Okay? Every relationship into which your child enters is going to influence, is going to affect, is going to set the course of your child's life. So, if your child is fellowshipping with anyone who is seeking to lead that child down a path that is not according to the Word of God, that is very, very dangerous and something needs to be done. But fathers, honestly, something should have been done before the relationship got started. Do you see? Children, I am much older than you. I'm probably much stronger than you. But I want you to understand something. Not even I will make friends with people who are going to lead me astray. Now, will I serve people who do not know God? Absolutely. Will I love them? Absolutely. Will I try to do everything in my power to help them and bless them? Absolutely. But will I enter into such a relationship that they begin to influence me? No. I'm not going to do that. You say, well, I think I'm strong enough. No, you're not. The Bible says you're not. So he says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. That doesn't mean that if someone doesn't believe in Christ, we reject them or we treat them poorly. That's not what that means. What it means is, you never want to enter into a friendship with another person who is going to begin to influence you to do evil things. Because it's extremely dangerous. Let me give you an example. A child comes to you, one of your friends, and says, hey, let's go do this. And you say, well, my dad says that we're not supposed to do that. And they say, oh, it'll be okay. They'll never find out. What should you do? Immediately, you should break away and go to your father. Immediately. Or to your mother. Immediately. And tell them what has been said. God wants you and I to know what His Word says and He wants us to do it. And He wants us to be very, very careful that we do not get involved in friendships and relationships with people who are going to influence us to do things against God's Word. Now, I just want to, just quickly, let's look at, at uh, verse 16. The second part of verse 16 God gives us a promise. He says, I will dwell in them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. God gives us a great promise that if we believe in Jesus Christ, He will fellowship with us. If we trust in Christ as our Lord and Savior, He will fellowship with us. But, if we have truly trusted in Christ and we truly long for the Father, for God, to fellowship with us, to be our friend, to walk with us, then what does it say we should do? Verse 17, 
Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will welcome you. Did you see that? Friendships, television, music, movies, all sorts of things that carry a message that lead us away from God, we should reject it. We should reject it. So children, realize this. If you truly want to please God, there are some, there are some things that you cannot do. You see that? One of the things, parents, that we want to do as Christians is first of all, direct our children to Christ. Direct them to Christ. To Christ. Separation will not save you. It must be Christ. But as they come to Christ, we also need to teach them that there are things in the Bible that please God. And we should dedicate ourselves to that which pleases God. And we should show our children from the Scriptures, not just word of mouth, but show them in the Scriptures, there are things that do not please God. They don't. And we should run from them with all our heart. Run from them. Years ago, I was struggling with some, some things. I was a young Christian. And then uh, Leonard Ravenhill sent me a little, little track. Found out I was kind of struggling with some things and sent me a little track. It says, Others can, but you cannot. What it means is this. If you truly love God to be on your life, then you cannot do many of the things that other people just have a freedom to do. You cannot. If you want to see the miraculous, if you want to see the power of God, you're going to have to make some decisions. It's very important. I know this message is not very popular. It's almost unheard of today. But I'm sorry. It is Scripture. And children, if you really want to please God, then when you discover that something is not according to the Bible, run away from it. Run away from it. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would use this, this message, Lord, to help the children and to help us as parents to realize the seriousness of everything that we do, especially with regard to the people, the young ones, that have been entrusted to us. Father, help us. In Jesus' name. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com. There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.